Credit Union says that's a result of car industry supply chain struggles during the pandemic. And a lot of people were forced to buy high mileage, old model used cars, which now are coming due for repairs. And he points out rising repair prices hit low income people the hardest because they're more likely to buy used cars. In Baltimore, I'm Stephanie Hughes for Marketplace. We're monitoring to see where the United Auto Workers Union will target for strikes beginning after midnight if contract negotiations with Ford, GM, and Stellantis do not gel in the coming hours. Markets S&P and NASDAQ futures are both up four-tenths of a percent. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business. From small business to big enterprise and everything in between, Amazon Business helps simplify the supplies buying process. Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. And by Affinity, helping investors navigate the relationship economy with the CRM built for private capital markets. Affinity.co slash marketplace. We're coming up on Climate Week in New York City, a partnership with the United Nations General Assembly. Climate experts, diplomats, and business leaders are gathering to discuss strategies to counteract human effects on the climate. A recent survey from the audit and consulting firm PwC finds half of senior business leaders in public and private companies view climate change as a risk to their firms. Just 20 percent call it a serious risk. This implies many, many companies are doing nothing to prepare for climate disruptions. My colleague Nova Safo spoke with longtime correspondent and now executive editor of The Economist. Economist magazine, Charlotte Howard. So is climate change a blind spot at corporate C-suites? Well, you have to think about all the things that companies are grappling with at the moment. So they face these really big questions like, do they disentangle their supply chains from China? How do they deal with inflation? Will artificial intelligence change their business? And in addition to those other priorities, they're thinking about the time frame in which they're judged, right? So is a CEO preparing for the next decade or the next quarter? And all of those factors mean that you have some companies that are taking climate change really seriously and a lot that aren't. Presumably because most CEOs are judged by the next quarter, not the next decade. Is that right? Yeah, for the most part, that's true. And so one way in which you see this playing out is that there are a lot of companies that have set, particularly big companies, that have set net zero targets for 2050. Now, that gets you a good press release in the short term. It also is convenient in that it will surely be a goal on which a successor is judged, not the CEO who said it. So there are some companies that really are taking steps, but for a lot of companies, it's more lip service. And what about those companies that are setting those near-term targets? How are they successfully dealing with potential disruptions from climate change? What does that look like? Well, it's interesting. There are different ways that a company can be affected by climate change. So in some instances, think about a food company. They're considering the risk of drought or they're considering whether their factories might be impacted by rising sea levels or more frequent storms. There are also companies that have to deal with with not just the risk from climate change itself, but the risk of stricter climate regulation. So you can imagine a company that may be thinking about a carbon tax at some point in the future and how it would affect its business or shifting patterns of consumer behavior if a car maker wasn't investing in EVs and there was huge consumer demand for electric vehicles, that car maker would be caught out. So there are a number of ways in which companies can deal with this. So very direct effects on production, on the way they acquire materials or the way they even process materials potentially in the future. Yeah, exactly. And it's interesting the different time horizons in which companies are thinking, as I referenced before. For a food company that was dependent on grain from Ukraine, you have a very immediate impact, right, in terms of thinking about their supply chain. And then you might have a really severe drought in a given year that makes these risks from climate change feel extremely immediate. And then there are other things that are just much more long term. And I think that's what you see reflected in that PricewaterhouseCoopers survey that for many companies, this just feels like something that they'll have to deal with at some point, but not on a given CEO's watch. Charlotte Howard is executive editor at The Economist magazine and co-host of the Checks and Balance podcast. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks for having me. And in New York, I'm David Brancaccio. This is the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.